Okay. Centrifugal force now. Or, uh, did you get cut off? Did you, somebody had a question over here. Okay. Okay, let's do centrifugal. So now we've got this one. Now let's do this one. Where's my eraser? Way over there. You could go under here, Thomas. Omega cross, omega cross R prime. We've already got omega. All we need now is R prime. What's R prime? Say it again. Yeah. So what's R prime? Yeah, that's right. Six thousand. 371. Isn't that what you just said? I said 637,800. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe I forgot a couple zeros. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Omega cross omega cross R. And everything's already in spherical coordinates, we just start crossing. I'm going to group all the, uh, the numbers up front. What'd you say? I was asking to answer your question about class registration. Oh, okay. <coughs> Okay, so what's this cross product here? Do the first one. Zero. R cross R, zero. Theta cross R? Negative phi. Negative phi. So <clears throat> this first piece here is gonna give us negative sine theta times negative phi hat. Now we gotta cross this with that. What's R cross phi? Theta. <laughs> I'll write that one more time, R theta. So R cross phi is negative theta. <coughs> so we're gonna have cos theta, times negative sine theta times, <coughs> actually negative negative becomes positive. And we're gonna get negative theta. Did Let's see that. And then we're gonna do the second one over here. So this is just this, this one. Okay. Now we'll do this one. This crossed with that. Uh, what's theta cross phi? R. R. So we're gonna get. So we're gonna have. I'll get rid of those. So we have uh, negative 
sine squared theta, theta cross phi is r hat. Now, I did all that using the cyclic, anti-cyclic thing. Do we have to do it that way? I, I, I did it that way because I just got done with 1600 and they're just learning cross product and I haven't shown them determinant yet. I should have, my, I didn't change mental gears to this class. Y'all know how to be determinant. We don't have to do it this way. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but you can do the determinant. This, it works with this too. The, the, uh, it's not part of it. <sighs> this is kind of ugly. Spit out a bunch of numbers. <coughs> Okay, so when I punch all this out, here's what I get. <coughs> Equals 0 0.00369, and I'm going to pull the sine theta out of that, and flip-flop the order so that there it's, it's in the order of the spherical coordinates. So the, the R hat piece comes first, so I'm going to have a sine theta r hat, and then I'm going to have plus cos theta theta hat. Does this make sense to everybody? And I happen to have in my notes that this is, and this contradicts what you said earlier, so something went awry somewhere, that this is rho hat and cylindrical. Do y'all have the coordinate, does anybody have the coordinate system sheet handy? Oh no, that's right. You, you did Z hat earlier. Now we've got row hat. Okay. What's the benefit of writing it in terms of row hat? Which way does the centrifugal force act? Like, just think about it on a kid on a merry-go-round. Which way is it? It pulls the kid out of the merry-go-round, right? Which, where is that on this globe? out, uh, let me use marker here, out, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, which is going to have an r hat component and a, phi hat, a theta hat component. But if you combine those, you say, oh, that's just straight out from the, perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? How y'all doing? In pain? Constantly in pain. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, from the bird's view, some mysterious force is pulling the bird up and south. Right? Which way is our hat? 
straight out from the surface. And where's theta hat? South. Straight south. So this bird feels like he's being pulled up and south simultaneously, which is the same as just that way. Is it the bird feels that or we see that? We, we look at the bird, and if the bird doesn't counteract it, that's what we see the bird doing. That's without wind. That's without wind, yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> From Superman's viewpoint, gravity and friction, wait, which way is friction pulling the bird? How's the bird flying? Using friction to propel himself north, right? So for friction, friction's propelling the board no north, gravity's pulling the bird to the center. <coughs> uh, which allows the bird to rotate in the circle with the earth. Okay. There's all the fictional forces. How y'all doing? Homework. That's the end. What do we do with all these numbers? Do we put them on the wall? So, so I, I'm, these were examples of how to use this equation. Okay. So, so your homework is going to deal with this equation. And, and those of you who are in the engineering world, in the in engineering dynamics class, we use the same thing in that class, but the engineers always look at it from Superman's viewpoint. I don't know why. Physicists always look at it from Lois Lane's viewpoint. I don't know why. I'm just telling you this, that's how, they're, they're both using the same equation, the same math. There's no difference. It's just that, I don't know, they just approach the problem two different ways. There's, uh, <coughs> in my notes, and I love to, to go over this section, I think I'll just introduce it and do an LTY. left to you. <coughs> uh, here's what this is. Uh, it's, it's called a Foucault pendulum. Foucault pendulum. Uh, <laughs> no. I uh, We're, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe we'll end up doing it, but for now I'm thinking we need to move on to other things because there's not much this, I feel like this semester's almost done. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm feeling overly crunched. I'll, I'll examine over the weekend and figure out, but. <laughs> Let me introduce it, because we only have five minutes, so we can't really do any math on it anyway. But here's, a, well, here's what a Foucault pendulum is. If you've, the, the pendulum is gigantic, and they have these every so often. Um, at Auburn, we had one in the brand new mechanical engineering building when they built the building, and they, it was, it was kind of like the, the thing that made it fancy, you know, is this big three-story study room, and in the middle of the three-story study room was this pendulum, and it was, it was attached all the way to the ceiling, way up at the top, and a big, huge brass ball down at the bottom. <coughs> so, so imagine the length of the string, three stories tall, pendulum. And then the way they started it that day, they pulled it all the way out, and they tied it to the wall with a really wimpy little string. And then they, let, they got all the vibrations out of the string and made, everything, made sure everything was just right so that, you know it's going to go straight to the middle. So there's no sideways push on this thing. And then to, to not push it, yeah, they're all over the place, to not push it, they take a lighter and go over to that string and burn the string so they don't push it and just let it go. And then, and that's how it started. And it's been swinging ever since. Of course, they, they add, because you know the friction, they, they add a little motor at the top that overcomes the friction. But other than that, the thing just swings. Now the problem is, is that as this thing rotates back and forth across the room, it's got a huge period because it's three story tall. So it, it takes, it's really fun to watch. Anyway, 
It's one of those mesmerizing sort of things that you can just stare at for hours. <coughs> the Earth is rotating underneath this. <coughs> and so the plane over which this pendulum oscillates rotates because we're on a rotating s surface. And so uh, over the course of a day, you know, in the morning it'll be swinging this way, in a couple hours it'll be swinging this way, in a couple hours it'll be swinging this way, and it just it, it rotates over the course of the day. And uh, there's a lot of fun math behind it. There's one at the um, Chicago O'Hare uh, Airport. You've probably seen it there. Uh, there's a couple of them. Sometimes they'll, they, they feel uh, the need to put little dominoes out there and let, put a little point at the bottom of the pendulum so it swings by and knocks a domino over. And then after two or three passes, it'll knock the next domino over. Anyway, they're pretty fun. 